You're going to hear the word view a lot in this course, so let's quickly review what view means. This is one of those cases where it's better to show you first and then tell you afterward. Here's what the bullseye screen will look like at the end of this part of the course, but with all of the visible views highlighted and labeled. Note that some of the views are invisible, and I'll point them out to you soon. A view is anything that can get drawn on the screen. In this screenshot, it seems that just about everything is a view. The text items, the buttons, and the slider, they're all views. In fact, every user interface control is a view. Some views can even act as a container for other views. In fact, the biggest view in the screenshot here is one of these. It's the view representing the screen itself. And it contains all of the other views on the screen, the text items, the buttons, and the slider. There are different types of views in Swift UI. These different types of views have one thing in common. They can all be drawn on the screen. What makes each type different is a combination of what they look like and what they do. So far, you've worked with a few different types of views. First, there is text. Text is a view that displays one or more lines of read-only text. The welcome to my first app message is a text view. Second, there's button. Button is a view that performs an action when triggered. In iOS, a button is triggered when you tap on it. The hit me button is a button view. Third, there's vertical stack, or vStack for short. vStack is a view that acts as a container for other views. The views it contains are called its children, and vStack's job is to arrange its children in a vertical stack. Now parents, don't try this with your children at home. You used a vStack in your app already. The vStack is what arranged the screen so that the welcome to my first app text is above the hit me button. Unlike the text and button views, the vStack view is invisible by default. Let's look at those bullseye screen views again, but this time with the specific types of views called out. You can see that the user interface for bullseye is mostly just made up of text and button views. Now you also may have noticed a control that you haven't worked with before, the slider. The slider lets the user enter a number by sliding a control, which is called a thumb, along a straight line track, where one end represents the minimum value and the other end represents a maximum value. I do want to point out that in most apps, you wouldn't make the user enter a precise value like this using a slider, because that can be kind of frustrating. However, for a game like Bullseye, the slider actually makes the game more challenging, which is a good thing. After all, we don't want to make it too easy for the player. Some of the views that go on your screen are invisible. One of these is vStack, whose job is to arrange its children views in rows. Effectively, the user interface for Bullseye is just four rows of views in a vStack, with a little bit of spacing added in. You'll also need to arrange some rows side by side. To do this, you'll use a new view called hStack which arranges its children views into a horizontal stack, hence the name. You'll use three hStack views, and you'll put each one inside a vStack container, as you can see here. All right, let's take another look at the code we have here for Bullseye. Remember, it's all about learning via repetition, right? Okay, so we have the body, which is supposed to be returning a view that it represents the entire screen. And right now, what we're returning is a vStack that contains two items inside. The first is a text that says, welcome to my first app. And the second view is a button that says, hit me. All right, so we're gonna reformat the code a little bit and add some comments so that we can more easily build up the rest of the user interface here. So we have this vStack and inside we want to put a comment that says target row. Because remember we have four rows of bullseye and the first one is gonna contain information about what the random target value is. And that's gonna contain the text label, so we'll leave that one there. After the first row is the second row that's gonna contain the slider. So we're gonna just add a comment for, to ourselves that we're gonna put the slider row stuff right there. And then we want the hit me button. So this is the row that has, we'll call it the button row, the one that has the hit me button. And what happens after the button row with the hit me button? Well, we have all the score information, like that's where the start over button will go, that's where the total score will go, the round number, and the info button. So we'll just call that score row and put a comment here. So why are we adding all these comments? 
it's because this is going to get fairly cluttered. We're going to have a number of controls here, and we want to easily, just at a glance, tell what goes with what row rather than having to dig through all these lines of code. So it's just a way to keep things a little more organized. You'll learn there's other ways to keep things organized too, and you'll learn more about those later in courses in this path, but this is kind of an easy way to get started.